So, ladies and gentlemen, we are arriving in the last session, the session Running Solutions. Uh, we have three uh, uh, short papers uh, as uh, contributions, and the first one is Mr. Lederer. Mr. Reader will, will speak about strategic uh, business process analysis. I have heard some sentences before. It uh, will be very interesting, I think so. Um, please, Mr. Reader. Thank you. So, a very warm welcome from my side. <clears throat> Let's imagine uh, the following situation. You are in a company and uh, you did an as-is analysis, meaning that you have all your business processes now documented. And, um, what you then do in the business process management life cycle is you have to do some kind of optimization of your current processes. For example, to do an analysis. Yeah? And what you have is the situation we have here on the slide. You've got a business process. For example, in our case, we did a case study on in an industrial company in the metal industry. And then we had the business process of quality insurance. So, and we've got lots, 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 many, many different um, methods of, for analyzing business processes. For example, you can do a network analysis, you can do a risk analysis, you can do a communication analysis, you can do a process-oriented SWOT analysis, and so on, and so on. The problem you have in business practice is that you don't know which analysis method should you select or which is your first choice for analyzing a certain business process? This is something uh, when we, uh, when we uh, looked at this model and when we tried to implement this model in different companies, um, the experts or the process managers could really confirm that they do not really know why they choose this or that certain analysis method. And um, what we tried is, let's take the strategic objectives for a decision for or against a certain method. Um, what we can see in literature and what we can see in case studies and we, what we can see in business practices, first of all, a systematic analysis of business processes is often not yet implemented comprehensively in business practice. Meaning that we have all these methods, um, they are really good documented, and, um, but we don't really implement them by now. There we can, uh, we made up two, let's say, categories of reasons why that is so. First of all, we've got operational problems. Most of you know, yeah? We haven't got the data, we haven't got the time, because the SDS modeling needs too much time and so on and so on. We've got communication problems. The team leader don't want that we analyze his or her business processes, yeah? And, um, but on the other hand, we've got also another problem, which is, we call it a, a conceptual problem, is that the underlying topics and objectives that should be answered by the analysis are neither explicitly documented nor used for the selection of methods. Meaning, we want to support our long-term business goals, our long-term strategy for a certain process for analyzing. And this leads, me to, um, this leads me to the background of um, this little model I want to present you today. I am uh, Matthias Lederer, as already introduced, from the University of Erlangen Nürnberg, and I'm doing my PhD, and um, I have some kind of dream, yeah? And I want to um, illustrate my dream for my PhD thesis. And the dream is, uh, it is called Transparency Management for Business Processes. It's all about, I want to align all business process activities with a certain business strategy. Yeah? We all heard many, many technical presentations at this conference. My one is not so technical. <laughs> it will perhaps become technical if we meet uh, in three years, yeah, perhaps. But uh, at present, it is not that technical at present. So, um, the idea is, first, in um, most companies, are kind of some let's say, strategic management, yeah? where you're in the top management, where you plan, where you implement, and where you control your long-term tasks. For example, uh, becoming or getting a greener image, or uh, implementing a sustainable portfolio in new markets, and so on. And then you've got many possibilities to implement your strategy. One possibility is you launch a project. Yeah? The other one is, that's why we are here, is 
we have business processes and they are one possibility how you can implement your strategic targets. Meaning, when we, uh, when we see business process management as the operationalization of a long-term strategic goal, we can say that, as it is uh, described here, the design, the analysis, the analysis, the to be modeling and also the deployment of business processes should really be aligned with your business strategy. Okay, I can see that some of you say, okay, this is a process, we have always a button up uh, technologies or methods. Sure, but this is a model, yeah? It's perhaps a bit simplified, but it's a model, yeah? And then at the last layer, you've got some kind of operationalization, meaning organizational when people are involved in a certain business process step or technical if uh, some decisions in a process are made by with the, with the help of IT systems. So that's basically when, where I'm doing research in and what we want to look at is some certain, let's say some certain uh, component of this, of this whole approach is um, the overall, I name it transparent implementation of a business strategy and the transparent controlling, meaning that at the top of the management I don't want to know how high is my complaint rate and I don't want to know how, um, how familiar are customers in a certain market with my products or not. I want to know if my business strategy is implemented or not. That's my basic question. So, this is what I call in my PhD transparency for business processes. And what we want to look at is a certain unique component, it's the analysis. And that leads me to the title of my presentation, it is about strategic business process analysis. And this describes the systematic selection, as I said, and implementation of analysis methods, many, many out there, and have to, uh, have to make, let's say, my choice. Uh, use for the operational improvement of business processes based on their ability to support the, uh, the long-term strategic goals of an organization. And that is more or less um, the overall I want to talk about. Um, we designed a model and also implemented this model in uh, different companies. Most of them were industrial companies and the uh, managers were quite satisfied with this model. Um, and this uh, procedure model um, has first of all an input. Of course, I need a corporate strategy as an input for the model and a business process I want to look at. Yeah, okay, that's sure. Yeah? But in fact, when you go in the company and we've got many other transparency uh, models and transparency approaches and um, when you come into a company and say, okay, now I want to implement this and that yeah, because it's a great research for me, they said, mm, there's one problem. <laughs> we haven't got um, cascaded the overall strategy of our company to this and that process, so we have to do that now, yeah? because the strategy is missing at present. Okay, we need a corporate strategy as input in the business process. And what the model gives to you is the matching method, so called. We, um, I will present you, uh, that's a rocket science, but it is quite interesting. Um, some kind of possibility how you can, let's say, document uh, your strategy to make it available for BPM activities. And then we did an, uh, a research on state-of-the-art analysis methods which are out there at present. And then the model gives you a, a, some kind of story algorithm for a ranking of the outcome. Okay? Okay. So, I will go through the procedure model, I want to explain you what are the certain components and afterwards I want to tell you if you don't want to implement the whole model, what you can take out of my, uh, of my speech today. So, this is uh, now at the top, here you can see we are first um, concentrating on the input. Of course, first of all you need a corporate strategy. Um, I will recommend for um, this model that you have a balanced scorecard because we um, we saw that uh, this is quite suitable for yeah, implementing this kind of procedure model. If you use a, if you use another form of yeah, semi formal documentation of your strategy, it should uh, follow the following requirements. First of all, you need a sufficient number of strategic goals, um, which is some kind of challenging sometimes. 
when you think of complaint processes in a company, um, try to make up 20 goals you want to reach. Yeah, That's uh, sometimes not that easy. The documentation of these uh, um, goals you want to reach must be comprehensive so everyone across the whole company can understand what you want to reach. And the strategy uh, level has to be appropriate. That's also very important. Um, Imagine the following situation, you've got the overall strategy of a company and now you are asking for the strategy for the quality, quality insurance process. And you have, got, you have to cascade it on the level which is suitable for you. The business process and there is also another input for the model and there I've got new, good news for you. Um, normally all state-of-the-art uh, Set of the annotations like, for example, the SPPM diagrams and also the event-driven value chains, for example, are sufficient for this model. So, this is um, a kind of strategy map. Um, how you can, let's say, in a semi-formal way, more or less, you can document your strategy. Um, I will come back to the case study um, of the industrial company with the quality insurance process. Um, this is a very simplified way. The, the actual um, strategy map was quite more, um, was quite bigger and more complicated, but I simplified that for my speech today. Um, you've got the different perspective of, of perspectives of a balanced scorecard, and they are arranged as layers because in learning and innovation perspective, normally supports business processes. Business processes normally support more or less. Uh, customer satisfaction and customer satisfaction, of course, leads to financial um, indicators. So, and this, for example, you, this is like you can arrange your um, strategic goals in such a strategy map. I will go through that. You just um, assign them to the um, perspectives, and afterwards, you um, just put them into causal change. Yeah? Um, for example, you want to have a high rate of people participating in your internal business process uh, trainings, which leads afterwards to a high service level in SAP because people know now how they act in SAP and so on, which leads to a low complaint rate in logistics because when people know how to work in SAP, uh, they don't make mistakes anymore. So this is a very simplified way, but you can think of that. And this is your business strategy, how you can document it. Then we uh, have to look at the analysis methods because we want to uh, combine the strategy with the analysis methods. What we first did was we built focus categories, meaning that specific, mm, let's say, specific, um, specific analysis methods focus on this or that topic. For example, they focus on process costs on cost drivers, on the cost structure of business processes. Some of them focus on process time, throughput time, if I reach deadlines or not. Or, for example, they focus on, where is it, process outcome, for example, meaning that they uh, look at um, how valuable is the outcome of a process for the internal external customer and so on. And what we then did, don't be shocked now, we made a great table where we put it in every analysis method we can uh, we could find the literature and then we rated them for if they support a certain category or not. I will make one example which is intuitive for everyone. For example a communication analysis. Yeah? You all know because you are SPPM uh, listeners. So a communication analysis is of course primary supporting number seven process communication analysis. Um, we make a disti um, distinction between uh, primary and significant. Significant means um, this certain method is some, in some extent explaining a certain category yeah? or is addressing a certain category. And primary means that it is significant. No, not significant. <laughs> okay, no, okay, we say um, it, is a, it is a very, very high, let's say, outcome if you do this analysis for a certain category. I want to be honest, we, um, we designed that kind of model without looking at SPPM. Mm. But for this uh, congress, <laughs> we afterwards implemented the idea of SPPM. We looked at the certain analysis methods once again, 
and also check if the SPPM notation is um, suitable for that kind of model. And what we did was we marked here which of these uh, methods, I know, which of these methods uh, support the idea of SPPM. What we then provide, provide you, you have to answer so-called key statements. For example, we have, we have uh, the complaint rate in logistics should be very low in this comp for this company. And then you have to rate from zero to five how important is a key statement for your strategic target. <laughs> For example, complaint rate in logistics should be less than a very low number. Um, then you can say, for example, where is it? Um, category 4. Relevant information to achieve the strategic goal is internal and external customer satisfaction regarding the process performance and the added value of the process. They can rate very high because this uh, key statement is really important for such strategic target. Okay? And then to rate that for all the strategic targets you documented. And afterwards, we've got some kind of story algorithm. That is not rocket science, it's very, very simple, but it's a, a bit formal here on this slide. Um, first of all, we've got the relevancy, as I introduced from 0 to 5, that was the last slide. Then we have the relevancy of a method, which is non relevant, of our method for its uh, focus category, which is 0, 1, or 2. Yeah? significant primary or no relevance and afterwards we may first we multiply it and afterwards we sum it up which means we come to a certain output this is a score for each method so what should you take out of my speech today you came up at the end when you implement our model with assigned methods here you can see them with a certain score which one is most appropriate for your business process? Which, uh, which method should you enter, uh, implement or not? Basically. And practical advantages for you now. First of all, this model simplifies your decision making. Yeah? And this is also what uh, I don't want to present the validation of these uh, things we implemented here. You can have a look at it it's in the proceedings of the conference. Um, we talked with many people and implemented this model for different uh, processes and it was quite, yeah, it was really quite um, successful. First of all, it supports your decision making because decision for or against the method is always a trade-off situation. You've got, you now you can make priorities and you can say what you want to implement in order to analyze a corporate strategy implementation. Then, you've got some kind of knowledge transfer. If you don't want to implement that model in a whole, you can have a look at the table we created and can see which analysis methods are out there, which perhaps are relevant for you and which are not relevant. The model can be used to consider so far unknown analysis capabilities and the model guides to first reflect on strategic targets and afterwards on the analysis. An interesting point for me was in the interviews people told me yeah, I really don't know how to make my decision on analysis. Yeah? And now you can say, I take this model to justify and to self-control in my business process activities. And you got the advantage of a very positively and improved model as it is documented in the proceedings. So, thank you very much for your attention. And just one little remark from my side. We have um, designed many more transparent models for mapping business strategy into uh, business process management. If you're interested in doing a case study with us, please contact me. We are searching for research and uh, business practice partners. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm very interesting framework out uh, uh, here. Thank you very much. Uh, question from the audience, please. things I want to talk about concerning this question. First of all, the question is, um, here we've got an open framework, which means you can uh, give me any strategy you have, yeah, and I can assign uh, certain analysis methods or deployment methods or whatever in other cases. 
So we are, or I am just thinking about if we have to reduce it to a predefined set of strategic targets. That's the first thing. And the other way around is um, in the normal, let's say, uh, normal teaching on BPM, you always say, okay, you come from a strategic point of view and then you implement it. And the idea is that I want to put through the strategic targets from the very bottom of the company to really to the IT level. Yeah. Thank you very much. So this is a special domain mm -hmm. which you have focused for your work. Yeah. Thanks. Further questions? This one right here. No okay. right here. No questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Th